Okay, welcome to mini lecture four for module three. This is the last of our physical environment of the Americas. And in this case, what I'm really going to be talking about is the climate parameters. I'm not going to be talking so much about climate change as how climate influences human activities in these areas. So remember, climate is long-term trends as opposed to weather being the instantaneous. All right, so what I would like you to focus on is the idea of the following. When we talk about climate in North America, one of the most important things you can remember is what's called the 100th meridian. When we look at North America, one of the things that you'll see is that climate is humid up until about the 100th meridian. And then as you move west of the 100th meridian, it begins to be significantly drier. We're going to look at that. The other thing about North America is that a significant portion of Canada is tundra and permafrost. Now that term tundra refers to areas that, ha that are above the tree line, that is they're too far north, too cold to have trees growing. And in, when we talk about permafrost, that means that the subsurface, the soil, stays frozen year round. The surface of the soil may melt through the summer, but below that there's a permafrost zone. And that's one of the major factors that prevents trees from growing in the area. Now we can flip that around and we can say that, okay, the boreal forest and the tundra occupy massive amounts of Canada. When we look at South America and much of Central America, we'll see the tropical rainforests dominate a significant portion of it. Now we should put that in the context though of the other major climate physiographic feature in the Americas that is the Atacama Desert. So when we think about the tropical rainforest, we often think about the Brazilian lowlands the Amazon Basin, largest rainforest, one of the largest rainforests in the world in terms of area. If you go just over the Andes, in other words, if you take the Peruvian rainforest, go up over the Andes, what you're going to find on the other side is what's called the Atacama Desert. This is an area that is so dry that in some areas it may not have rained for literally centuries. And so we have these extreme contrasts of climate throughout the region. Now, I'm going to, we're going to look at a couple of these in a, in a few different ways. I want you to think about what this means. All right. So, let's take a look at North America from its basic climate regions. And what I want to point out, these are these major areas, and I just want to kind of look at what they mean. Everything here in the light purple is that idea of tundra. All of this land is essentially permafrost. That means it's not viable in terms of agriculture and in fact forest cover will not grow on it. The purple that's a little darker is the subarctic region dominated by the boreal forests of North America. Boreal forests differ from those that you might see in Pennsylvania for example in that they are predominantly almost exclusively conifer forests, that is needle leaf forests. As you go a little farther south though what you'll notice here is that we move into a humid continental, meaning that we get an excess of precipitation and a humid subtropical. Now right here is what I mean by that hundredth meridian. That is the divide between the areas that are humid and the areas that are arid. In North America, that comes into play in some interesting ways. I'm going to put in a couple of locations here. We're going to go to Dodge City, Kansas to start. And what I want you to note is the feature that you see right now. One of the odd things when you go out to this part of Kansas, so now we've crossed the 100th meridian, and what you should notice are all of these circles. And in fact, what these circles are, are center pivot irrigation sites. This area here is a mile square, and in each of the centers of these is a deep well, in most cases, going down to something called the Ogallala Aquifer or one of the other sister aquifers in the region. The area is so arid that we have to pump water to the surface in order for agriculture to be viable. Massive wheat production, but groundwater is necessary to reliably farm. I want to put that in contrast, so we're going to go east now of that 100th meridian, and we're going to go to DeKalb, Illinois. Now, DeKalb, Illinois is home of DeKalb seed corn. And what I'm going to do is go just a little bit west. And what you'll notice is these same one mile squares, but you'll notice there is no center pivot irrigation. Once we're east of this, especially Illinois, uh, eastern Iowa, Indiana, what you will see 
is that there's surplus water. There's enough moisture that falls as rain that we don't need to use groundwater. So again, we have these differences in terms of our ability to irrigate the areas or not irrigate. How do we grow farm or how do we grow crops? Do we use groundwater? Do we use surface water? Now we can see that it's even more extreme and we're going to go to Nazca in Peru, Ica, Peru. And now we are in the true Atacama Desert. What you'll notice here along the coast is that there's literally no vegetation. This area is so dry that in many of these areas uh, they were actually mummifying people simply by putting them out in the desert. They would simply dry out. However, people do occupy these areas in very, very narrow farming systems. What you'll notice right here, if we follow the streams as they run to the coast, is that people actively farm right in the stream valleys. So these stream valleys are glacially fed from the Andes. Water runs down and is very reliable. People have been farming these stream valleys for literally millennia. And so we can see that they're quite reliable in this way, but essentially it's a stream that runs right through a desert. Okay, so those are our major concepts of climate, hydrography, and physiography. Make sure you read that part in both the North American section and in the South American and Latin American section. That's it for this part of the lecture. We'll be back when we look at colonization.